Welcome to Louisiana Business Spotlight. I'm Jeff Cruer. What a great program we have lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about real estate with a local expert, also talking about websites and the internet and social media with a person who's built his business right here in Jefferson Parish. But first, let's start with some of the top business stories we're following right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Nearly a third of all homeowners uh, whose houses were damaged by a powerful tornado that roared through New Orleans East in early February may be under or uninsured completely. That's according to a survey conducted by a local nonprofit group. That group and other nonprofits are leading the push to fund financial gaps in the long term recovery effort. As they say, it's increasingly clear that the federal government's financial assistance will come up short. Ford Motor Company says that it's making a quote, an accelerated an attack on costs by offering voluntary buyout packages to salaried workers in North America and Asia. As our CEO, Mark Fields, faces pressure to improve profit and boost the car maker's stock price. The automaker expects about 1,400 salaried employees to leave by the end of September, according to an emailed statement. The early retirement offers won't be extended to key employees engineering new models and developing technology such as self-driving cars. Louisiana dropped 1,300 non-farm jobs during the 12 months it ended April the 30th. Now that's based on losses in trade and transportation and utilities, leisure and hospitality, and government, outweighing gains in construction and health. The state closed March with 1,974,400 non-farm jobs, down 0.07%, and that's according to preliminary estimates from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. The construction sector added 7,800 jobs, while education and health services added 7,500 jobs. Trade, transportation, and utilities lost 3,500 jobs, government 3,100 jobs, and leisure and hospitality, 3,000 jobs. And finally, President Donald Trump. His administration has tapped a political veteran here in Louisiana, Scott Angel, to head the Federal Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement. And that regulates offshore drilling. Angel's appointment means that the Bro Bridge native will step aside from his duties on the Louisiana Public Service Commission, where his term was slated to run through 20. 18. Okay, when we come back, we're going to talk all about real estate. Our expert, Luis Ramos, is going to be joining us next right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Very pleased to bring on a real estate expert, uh, someone who's going to fill us in on what's going on here in the local market, also nationally, from Gulf South International Realtors. Luis Ramos is with us. Luis, how are you? Great. How are you, Jeff? Good Very to see good. you again. Welcome uh, to the show. And uh, before we get started into the specific of what's going on now in real estate, uh, tell our viewers a little bit about how you got involved in this business. Well, I got involved because of my mother. My mother, you know, and I, we wanted to buy a house. And there were, at the time, they didn't have a lot of Latin realtors. So based on my own bad experience of being a real, real you know, being a first-time home buyer not knowing, I turned out to be a real, real estate agent. And that's why I became the people's realtor, to help and service the public. Wow. So you really just uh, developed that love for the business when you were a buyer yourself. That's it. I've been doing this for 21, almost 21 years now. Wow. Long time. So what changes have you seen in the market in that time? Oh, the market has changed dramatically. I mean, from all the way we've evolved from the business, from computers, all the way, all the way from books to computers, but the market. I see houses back, you know, now that I'm older. I see homes that used to sell for 60, 80,000, selling for 150, 200, 300,000. I'm like, I remember that house a long time ago. Which goes to show you the uh, the value of real estate investing, huh? Oh, the appreciation is, is tremendous. Now they say that some of the best you know investments you know are definitely real estate. It's always secure. Everyone always has to live somewhere, Jeff. Mm -hmm. No matter what, they have to live, rent. So real estate, land is always prime. Now, what about commercial versus residential? Commercial uh, it, it all depends. You know, location, location. Those mm -hmm. are the three main things that people you know will, that you will learn in real estate. Location, location. You know, I remember, and uh, 
you know, I was in high school at the time, grammar school at the time when uh, you had interest rates back in the, in the late 70s, like 21%. I mean, I don't know how in the world anybody bought a house back then. And you know, that was, that was the norm. I mean, I remember, I remember hearing what I call the old timers, you know, talking about rates being 18, 21%. People were still buying. And just imagine, I remember in 1996, I was selling homes at 9%. And that was the norm. And people were like, wow, that's a great rate. And look at them now. So give us, give us a lowdown. What are we looking at now? Rates, um, and, 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 I, and you can't quote me on them because I legally, you know, I'm not a, right. a loan officer, but rates were between 3.85 and maybe 4.85. Uh -huh. There's a lot of different programs that are available out there to help first time home buyers, but rates are still at an all time low. Okay, and why is that? What's going on? Are they just trying to encourage more people? Is that sort of the federal policy to encourage more people? To I would buy say homes? It, it encourage, and I think one of their models was rebuilding home ownership in America. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it is the perfect time for those first time home buyers to go out there, buy homes, use government grants and government money to absorb the down payment and also help the closing costs mm -hmm. and walk into a home with very little money. So the, the government makes these kind of programs attractive. Yes, they do. And they, they want to help people that are doing it for the first time. Yes, they do. And uh, people should take advantage of that. Now, you're an expert on that, so we have your contact information on the screen for everybody to see, and I'm sure others out there know as well. Uh, is Jefferson Parish a particularly good area for these sorts of resources? Oh, look, let me tell you, Jefferson Parish Finance Authority, there's a program out here that a lot of, you have to be, a lender on their list in order to participate but they're giving between three and four percent assistance to purchase these homes with down payment and closing cost assistance mm -hmm. and there's also even a soft second mortgage that they're doing what they call the Jefferson Parish Community Development up to about $2,500 in assistance you can walk into a home practically with nothing down Wow it's amazing you just got to build it and put yeah. it together you know, that's amazing because I used to remember seeing these commercials, no money down, and they would promise, you know, no money down, you could get real estate. And I always thought, wow, that's a scam. You can't get real estate with no money down, but you're saying you can. Uh, and I'll give you some examples. I had a teacher, you know, he's actually a chef, you know, at one of the schools, and he walked into a house with $780 out of his pocket. And got a house valued at? $140,000. Wow. Couldn't beat it, you know? And that's wow. here in Jefferson Parish. Jefferson Parish has, has become one of the hottest parishes to buy mm -hmm. because of many different reasons. You know, the economy, jobs, you know, primarily, mm -hmm. also schools, you name it. Just everything is so close from the East Bank of Jefferson to the West Bank of Jefferson. Yeah. In today's market, Jeff, anything that you put on the market for about 150, 170, boom will disappear like hotcakes. Let's talk about prices if we could, because mm -hmm. we've seen certain areas of the metro appreciate faster than others. Right. So when we look at this sort of the metro area, what's a ballpark, what's like an average, you know, price for a home? I know it varies, there are million dollar homes, there's it, it, starter it does, homes. It, it does but vary, but say for example, you know, if we come say, uh, let, let's start, <coughs> you know, on the East Bank of Jefferson Park. Yeah. Say for example, you go say Metro. You know, easily, you know, in is going to cost you 185, maybe 200,000 on up. You know, if you go to those certain parts of the West Bank, you know, say Gretna, you know, you're looking at about maybe 140, 150 easily. You mm -hmm. know, so some certain parts of Harvey, you know, you'll look at 150, 180. But the great thing about all this, Jeff, prices are stable. Mm -hmm. We never inflated like during the great times of 2008 mm -hmm. where we were overpriced and they had that bubble. Right. Prices are stable. They keep, in my opinion, they keep balancing and holding steady mm -hmm. and it's uh, an awesome opportunity for buyers to buy but for like investors so you, you'd say you buy your home uh, you put in some improvements mm -hmm. and then you eventually turn around you want to sell it and, and maybe move into a bigger home or downsize you'll be able to get your money back right I mean because there is appreciation isn't oh, of there? course there's appreciation mm -hmm. and there's not for investors you know for the savvy investors that are out there buying bank you know, own properties and things that were own, owned by by banks. Mm -hmm. They can buy homes at relatively good prices, fix it up, and put them back on the market for those first-time home mm -hmm. buyers who can walk into a house with relatively right. no money down and homes that are renovated, which is keeps it keeps the market really. Well. You know, my wife and I have thought about doing that as sort of a business on the side. Mm -hmm. We haven't done it, but we know people that are doing it quite successfully. Yes. And, and I tell you, Jeff, you know, we teach classes on how to buy, you know, for, you know, buy homes as first time home buyers, but also investors. You know, there's all these classes out there that always go, hey, you know, give us all this type of money. But no, you can learn all these mm -hmm. things if you work with the, some of the best local realtors, you know, that know a lot about mm -hmm. buying and flipping. It's all about 
calculations, knowing the risk and also putting the right crew together to make to make these homes. And if you don't do those things properly, you could lose a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you're not using, you know, trusted contractors, people working on your house that are that are going to be reputable, then then again, you could be scammed. Absolutely. And that's why you got to be very careful who you mm -hmm. work with. And it's all about having the right team, you know, from your title company, your mortgage company to your realtor, people that you can trust and people. And remember, you know, a as realtors, we are here to serve the public. Mm -hmm. That is the number one goal for us realtors is to protect the public and make sure that the public is protected on all the outcomes mm -hmm. uh, of, of when they're buying or selling. Let's talk about Jefferson Parish and the different neighborhoods. So, so what right now, and you're an expert in Jefferson, what is like really the hot areas right now in uh, in Jefferson? Well, let's go with the West Bank. Yeah. West Bank uh, of Jefferson Parish, we're looking hot areas as far as Gretna, Harvey, you know, Marrero. I mean, it's affordable. You're buying quality houses, you know, that have been renovated at affordable prices with very little money down out of pocket. Because remember, these government programs, and don't quote me on it, mm -hmm. can go up to about $273,000 mm -hmm. and some change. That's a lot of cash, you know, with, with you getting government assistance. On the East Bank side, as usual, you got Metairie, and, you know, Metairie, which is the hottest, and then you got Kenner also. Mm -hmm. So definitely um, very Jefferson Parish, in my opinion, mm -hmm. hot. People want to be here for lots of different mm -hmm. reasons. So you think uh, both of those areas are good as far as appreciation? You know, oh, yes, absolutely. Ability to absolutely. I think that, you know, if you buy in, in mm -hmm. Jefferson Parish, you know, as long as you don't buy overpriced and you don't mm -hmm. build or, or, or renovate, you know, put gold, you know, put a gold tub, you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that Jefferson Parish has maintained their, their value steady. It's mm -hmm. vibrant. Mm -hmm. It's a vibrant parish, mm -hmm. and I really do expect that you know we're going to see greater and better things and greater pricing in the future. And as far as nationally, Luis, as far as uh, rates, uh, anything on the horizon that we should be concerned about that might uh, increase uh, rates? There's a lot of speculations, you mm -hmm. know, with people coming out, you know, out of you know uh, out of you know Washington D.C. talking things. But rates are great right now. Mm -hmm. I think the president's doing a great job, you know, maintaining you know rates at a fabulous price, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, or, or f fabulous, you know, rates what they are right mm -hmm. now. So honestly, I think we're going to be okay for the mm -hmm. next, you know, at least next six months, you know, end of mm -hmm. the year, we're going to do well. And there's all these government programs that are helping first time home buyers out there. Now, one of the things that does concern me, Jeff, yeah. that, and me personally, that I've been seeing, I have been noticing prices rise. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're rising, they're rising because you know what? We're getting a lot of people from different parts of the country coming into New Orleans. Right, and the New Orleans area. area right. Oh yeah, and the New Orleans area in general, mm -hmm. which is a great thing. Yeah. But um, I, I do I do notice that prices are rising. I don't know, I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, you know, the Fallberg Marigny and the oh, Bywater yeah. and <laughs> some of these areas years and years ago, yeah. I mean, you could get houses for almost nothing. Yeah, and and almost now, nothing. Prices, I talked to a friend of mine the other day, have incredibly skyrocketed in there. Yes, they have. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, you got people from all over the country, they say, oh, they're rebuilding areas mm -hmm. that were never thought of being right. rebuilt. And it is amazing when you mm -hmm. go into some of these areas, mm -hmm. you're like, wow, look at this, you know, the different mm -hmm. colors of the homes, right. renovations, these old time homes that were just falling apart. People come in, fix them up. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it's, it's amazing. And do you think that trend is going to continue? Yes, I do. Okay. And I think prices are going to continue to rise. And I think we're, New Orleans has really become a multicultural city. It's mm -hmm. becoming more, it reminds me a lot of California. Yeah. Except and for the mountains. Yeah, right, right. And you know, the interesting thing is, we sort of have a little film industry here. Yes, we do. They've, of course, got uh, most of the industry, but a lot of people have started to make films here because of all the culture, mm -hmm. as you say, and the great scenery, and uh, of course, the food and all that. Yes. Luis, you You've done a great job, and I appreciate all the information. Thank you very much for oh, filling us in. Thank you for having us in. And uh, so final words, I guess, would be uh, now is a good time to buy real estate. Absolutely. Buy. You know, we got different government programs. We service you in many different languages, you know, here at Gulf South International Realtors. And we are your local and international source for all of your real estate needs, Jeff. Okay. Thank you, Luis. Appreciate yeah. it very much. Thanks for coming. All right. When we come back, we'll talk about what's going on in the world of the Internet, online sales, from a businessman right here in Jefferson Parish. That's next right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're going to talk about something which is, I think, uh, very interesting, and it's really the trend. More and more of our retail establishments are going to online sales, and our malls are having a tougher time. Things are going toward the internet more and more, and our next guest is someone who's really been on the forefront of this for years. Brett Bowman is with us here, a Planet Guide based right here in Jefferson Parish. And uh, Brett, how are you? I'm pretty darn good, Jeff. How about yourself? Good, good. Uh, when did you get started in this? 1996. I was one of the first ones. I saw the internet coming and I pretty much my last semester of school dropped out and started my company. And uh, you, you initially were like doing designing websites, that kind of thing? Is that uh, really what well, your first Plan focus Planet was? Planet Guide was meant to be a global guide to the planet, tourism. We, we lived in a tourism town. Mm -hmm. But then I noticed people would give me a lot of money to develop websites and it just kind of morphed into that. And mm -hmm. Here we are over 20 years later and I'm still building websites. And, you know, and things have changed. The websites have become uh, a lot uh, more advanced and people expect a lot more, don't they? It's, it's extremely sophisticated mm -hmm. and the amount of information that we collect. I mean, I can target my audience like, show me what car you like to drive, what's your income, what is your education level, have you been married, how long have you been married, are you buying a house, and I can target my ads accordingly. You know, the reason I wanted to have you on today is I, I did a report for last month's show which talked about how retail sales in the malls are down and how they project them to continue going down. And, you know, parish governments are going to have to make adjustments there. And it's just more and more people are just uh, buying their, their goods online, aren't they? Oh, it's very true. Um, mm -hmm. Brick and mortar is, is not what it was and it never will be again. As a matter of fact, there's a trend where you go out and look at the brick and mortar store, find what you like, and then go order it online because we made it too easy. Amazon will del deliver with Prime within two days and have it at your door and make it easy for you to return. And there was no tax for the longest. Now all of a sudden we have a tax, but it's too late. Mm -hmm. So uh, Pandora's out of the box and is never going back in again. So if you had a client that was interested in some sort of a retail establishment, would you tell them not to do any kind of brick and mortar? No, brick and mortar can work within the right realm. There are certain items that people will never want to go purchase online. But that is changing. Furniture is one of the things they do like to see and feel and touch, and it has to be delivered. Now they will go on look online. I Ikea can be bought online, mm -hmm. but Henradon, something expensive, you're going to want to go to a storefront and right. actually pick it, look it, feel it, touch it. But what I've noticed, Brett, and you can verify this or not, that seemingly in, in, in the malls, in the strip malls, you have more and more vacancies these days. And we're going to continue to see that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's left in the mall? It, it, we shop online. At mm -hmm. 2 in the morning, You, I, I need a new pair of shoes. What do you do? You go look at Zappos, mm -hmm. or you look at Amazon, or you find a little store in Florida. There's room for mom and pop still in this business because we can cross the state lines. And UPS and FedEx are coming to your brick and mortar store every day anyway. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of investing in that infrastructure and designing a website that can sell to the rest of the public. Now, the only thing about brick and mortar is you still have that personal service, right? You have that relationship with that store owner that you don't have online. This is very true. But I think stores have done a great job online mm -hmm. of making it very personal. Uh, personable when you talk to somebody. They, mm -hmm. they answer the phone right away or Amazon has a great service put in your phone number, we'll call you right back mm -hmm. so you're not sitting there waiting on hold. Now, right. how great is that? Right. You know, even when you're calling locally, if you tried to call our cable company lately, mm -hmm. good luck, you're going to be on the phone for 20 or 30 minutes on hold, yeah. pushing buttons to get through. So I, I think that personalized service, although we do like it, mm -hmm. we're willing to forego it. Now, you know, as we see things change, you know, you've seen websites change uh, over the years, you've been a Planet Guide. The whole dimension of social media has been just uh, an earthquake for your business, right? It has been fabulous for mm -hmm. us. We, mm -hmm. we figured it out uh, pretty early on. Uh, we have 130,000 people following us on our Facebook page, New Orleans Local. Um, it's powerful. The ads that we can target at people because of the information we collect, I was alluding to that earlier, um, if somebody just got engaged, well, we know that all of our customers in the wedding industry, the event industry, we should start serving ads up to those people. Mm -hmm. If I'm a jewelry store, I want to start showing you diamond rings, you know, the, to buy that big ring, uh, the, the matching set or the groom set, um, limousines, uh, everything. It, it's just incredible the amount of information we collect. Um, 
if you just bought a house, well, I know you're mm -hmm. going to need pest control services, mm -hmm. or you may need a new roof, or you may need inspections. These are all things that I'm going to target at you. And then where does Facebook and Twitter fit into all this? Are, have they reached their peak, or are they still growing? Facebook and Instagram are the bears. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter is not so much. Now, if you talk to, to a marketing person, they're going to, Brett, Brett, shame on you. No, everybody needs Twitter. No. If I'm somebody like yourself that's in the media and people mm -hmm. want to follow you, yes, Twitter is fabulous. Mm -hmm. But for me, Brett Bowman, nobody wants to follow my personal Twitter account, nor do they want to follow the shoe store's Twitter account. Mm -hmm. So it's just the right mix for the right people. Snapchat is a prime example. Snapchat's on its way down, but 16 and 15 year olds love it. Mm. Last year we took the mortuary and we purchased the House of Shock space. And so whenever you went to the House of Shock, you were seeing our ad for the mortuary. It cost me $5 to do that each mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. And we had 40,000 people see our ad. Wow. So it's just knowing these different vehicles and how to reach different audiences, because each one of these have different types of audiences, right? You're not going to have a middle-aged person on Instagram, are you? You will. You will. You'll have a very mixed, mostly <coughs> female, mm -hmm. um, but, but it's changing and it's so targeted. So I really, I'm picking who I want right. anyway. I'm, I'm going right out. I mean, show me all the people that work for Whitney Bank. I'm going to serve them that ad. Right. It, it's just incredible. And then on the other hand, you have Facebook, which is more of an older demographic than some of these other ones like Snapchat, right? It is now, yes. I mean, the, I mean my kids, younger kids, probably view Facebook as sort of old fashioned, don't they? Not really. Mm -hmm. Jeff, I hate to tell you this. They have a, an account on Facebook. They just don't let you know about it. Mm -hmm. So they have two accounts, one for mom and dad to see, and then they have a special hidden account that's theirs. So they generally so do So they have still an use it, they just hide from us. Sure. Okay. You well, know. That, that, that says a lot right there. That really <laughs> does. Now let's talk about Jefferson Parish. This has been uh, your home for your business. Uh, as you've grown uh, here in Jefferson, uh, you've provided services uh, via Planet Guide to Jefferson Parish and businesses throughout the area. How tech savvy are we here in the parish? Believe it or not, we're pretty darn tech savvy for being in the nation. Mm -hmm. um, I think we were one of the first to really embrace the internet because of our tourism culture here. And we realized that that was the way to reach the world was through the internet. And more and more, we've had a lot of people, young people moving here mm -hmm. because New Orleans is such a hip city to live in. And Jefferson Parish has gotten to feed off of that because a lot of just smart individuals are moving to our city. Mm -hmm. My problem now is I think we're starting to stagnate mm -hmm. and we're not letting that innovation come in. Now that you're talking about Jefferson, you're talking about the whole metro area? I guess the whole metro area. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a chance to have Google come in and give us ultra high speed internet and our politicians blocked us on that. They did this in other and areas? Google went to Provo, Utah, mm -hmm. and Provo, Utah is a boom town because of it. What? Many, many high-tech companies have moved to Provo, Utah, mm -hmm. so they could have that bandwidth. Um, Knox centers, which are called network operations mm -hmm. centers, which are huge computer farms, have located there, many of the big ones. But I had heard that there was sort of a little burgeoning industry in the New Orleans area where some high-tech firms were moving here and it was growing a little. Sure. I mean, we have people are designing software. Mm -hmm. We have game designers coming mm -hmm. to town. But a lot of it is how fast is the internet connection. And the faster that interconnect internet connection, the more people you're going to and it's, attract. And what you're saying is it's not very fast here compared not to other at all. areas? Not compared really? to the... And why is that? Google offered to come in and mm -hmm. Google Our infrastructure just isn't as advanced as other areas? No, it, it really came down to who owned the power uh, lines and the poles and mm -hmm. Google was going to have to attach devices. What can we do now uh, if you were advising our politicians to grow this industry here? To work with them closely, work with Verizon's, the AT&T's, the Cox, what do we need to do to make our infrastructure the best in the world? Europe is, is running way past us now. When you go there, there's high-speed access everywhere. Asia, when you go there, there's high-speed access everywhere. We don't have it here in the United States like they do in the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to catch up. We need to play catch up. Yeah. Well, that's going to cost money, though, right? 
That's true. Or is private industry going to do it? I mean, Well, there's money to be made there. I yeah. think people are mm -hmm. willing to pay. Mm. Plus, more and more of us are cutting the cord. You've heard that term where you're, you're getting rid of the cable company right. with the TV and you're watching everything Especially online. the younger generation, right? I mean, Especially. They, they, have, they have cut the cord. I, I cut the cord five years ago myself, so mm. and I, I'm a prime example. I'm the older generation mm -hmm. that, that did it a long time ago. But we need higher speed internet because mm. of it. You know, because I want to download everything online. I want to watch my TV shows that right. way. I want to watch my movies that way. Now, in our final minute or so, Brett, for our viewers out there, maybe there's some new business owners, maybe some folks thinking about starting something new. Would you recommend to them that they need both a website and a social media presence or, or one or the other? Oh, they have to have both. It, it goes hand in hand. The social media presence should always drive traffic back to your website. Mm -hmm. Google is Google and they're still king. And so you want to drive all the traffic to your website to bring that up in Google's eyes. So you always appear well there. And it, it's quid pro quo. If you build that up, then your media presence on the social media comes up as well. And, it really and on your social well. media, you're always targeting back to your website, aren't I you? I am. Mm -hmm. I am. I'm trying to always direct traffic there because I want Google to see, look at all this traffic I have right. coming to my website. And that brings me up in their algorithms for page rank. And in the end, most people are searching for what they want. You know, I need paint. And so I go online to New Orleans Paint Companies, and hopefully Helm Paint is at the top of the list. Mm. And they're not going to find Helm Paint's Facebook page. They're going to find Helm Paint's website, mm -hmm. and that's what we want to happen. Now, and finally here, is that what they call SEO, search engine optimization? That is search engine optimization. Okay. We're right. constantly designing our pages um, that the pictures are named correctly, the page names themselves are correct, the content on the page is correct. We want to rise to the top, but we still pay Google with the pay-per-click ads right. to be on top because it works better than anything. So that's a lot of what, I guess, customers pay you to do, not just design a website, but to get that optimization so that when they go on Google, they're going to be at the top. We do everything for them. We're the one-stop shop. We build their website, we take care of their social media presence, we build their content out, mm -hmm. um, and we keep up with it on a regular basis. And then we switch our time. So a lot of people put us on retainer for so many hours a month. And for folks out there, they're saying, wow, you know, we've got a few hundred uh, likes. How in the world did you get over 100,000? What's the secret? Give the people what they want. Mm -hmm. People love New Orleans, and mm -hmm. we always showed the positive side of New Orleans. Mm -hmm never anything negative. Um, pictures of our houses, pictures of our unique culture. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I bring to the table is I've traveled all over the world and I know how unique New Orleans mm -hmm. is. This is one heck of a place to live. Right. And so we give them that and yeah. they love it and they want to see more of it. And that's how they respond and uh, you've got how many likes? 131,000 and some change. Wow, that's awesome. Brett, fascinating discussion. Thank you very much, sir. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Jeff. And I'm glad uh, you're based right here in Jefferson Parish. All right, let's go next to some good news stories in our local business world. That's next on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now some good news in our local business world. Local fans of the Spanish fashion retailer Zara got ready to do a happy dance. Zara will open its first ever Louisiana location at Lakeside Shopping Center. That's going to be in uh, Metairie, of course, in 2018. The mall announced that the opening, along with several other changes, will be coming, including a $10 million interior renovation project and a new Fleming Steakhouse. That's going to be at the corner of Causeway Boulevard and 17th Street. Fleming's will open in the fall of 2017, while the renovation will be completed in sections over the next three years. So good news, good things are happening at Lakeside. Dat Dog opened in 2011 as a hole in the wall hot dog and sausage shack on Ferret Street in New Orleans. This year, the hot dog chain is now taking its concept outside New Orleans with plans for more than 25 franchise locations in Louisiana and Texas. Dat Dog will partner with B&G Food Enterprises to open 25 restaurants in the Houston area over the coming years. Congratulations. And the Old Mentory Commons, a new mixed use development that uh, project owners say will include high-end commercial and luxury apartments, is now under construction. The owners, uh, GeoCore Investment LLC of Metairie, 
Started construction last month on the 16,276 square foot building at 2328 Metairie Road. Uh, the building is projected for completion in November. All right, folks, if you have any ideas or comments about topics or potential guests, please contact me at jcruer at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jeff Cruer, and I'll see you next time for another edition of Louisiana Business Spotlight. Thank you.